Hello, what's up, y'all? These are the earrings that I had on today. Aren't they pretty? But I'm not putting them back on, so I just put them here so you can see how my outfit looked earlier before I took a nap. Because I have training tonight. All right? So let me explain something to y'all really fast. And this is really for my ladies because not I don't think too many men have a problem with this. But if you do, stay and listen. Um, I want to talk about creation. When people talk about the life that they want, they often come from like a victim sort of angle where it's like, oh, I don't have this by circumstance. I don't have this by happenstance. I don't have this because of these things not being in place. But a lot of people aren't really cognizant that everything that you have in life, you have to put it there, right? God will put things in your path when you have a certain goal. So if you go into something, let's say you go into your job like, okay, I want to get promoted, right? Your goal of being promoted is going to inspire you to do certain actions. So when you see there is a need at your job, you'll try to fill it. When you see that someone needs help training someone else, you'll try to be that trainer. You want to be that go-to in the position that you're in and you want to position yourself as a person of wisdom and a person of power and strategy, okay? Because wisdom, there are a lot of people who are wise but don't move in a strategic manner. What do I mean by that? They have all the knowledge. You can go to them and ask different things. And then you're like, dang, well, why don't you apply this to your own life? You're super smart. You can start your own business. Oh, no, nah, young buck. I can't do that. I'm old. I'm to this. I'm to that. So they have the knowledge, but they're just not doing it. And this is why I hate that bullshit ass saying, oh, well, you can't listen to people if they don't have it. Like I talk about relationships because I date and I'm good at it. But when people are like, oh, well, Miss Love, are you married? Do you have a ring on? Like, no, I am not married. I'm not engaged, but I have been in a long-term relationship. I had a father growing up who was present, who was in the house, who married my mom. I also grew up with other men in my life, my uncle, my grandfather. I have a lot of male cousins, you know, so it's like I've been around men. I understand how men operate. I understand how they think. And for those of you who really, really know me, you know, I used to hang out with nothing but guys. And that was just by nature. It had nothing to do with, oh, females are too much drama because that's bullshit. I get along with women perfectly fine. It just had to do with the fact that I genuinely get along with men and I understand the way they think, right? So obviously understanding the way they think as I got older, I realized, hmm, I can't really have male friends, <laughs> but I was able to get along with them at that age because I knew what it was. I was easy to get along with. I was down to earth. I'm cool because I'm accustomed to men. A lot of you women cannot have successful relationships. Um, not that it's impossible, but you haven't been able to do that so far because you don't understand men at all. You can barely have conversations with them. Every instance that you have a date, it sounds like a job interview. You're, oh, well, how many people have you dated? How many people have you had sex with? Why does that matter? Right? But I'm about to go off on a tangent. I'm not here to talk about relationships in particular. I'm here to talk about the fact that you have to create the life that you want. So for those of you women who are dating like, oh, I want God to just send me a good man. I keep dating all these losers. Yeah, but you're entertaining losers. When that loser jumps in your DM... When that loser sees you walking down the street, you know, on your daily jog and you <laughs> smiling back and flirting just for the attention, you're setting yourself up for failure. When your ex pops back in the picture and you like, oh, I like the way he make me feel. You know, I just have memories of how romantic he was, but you know, he's a scumbag. You know, he got five kids, five different women and you allow him back into your space. You're setting yourself up for failure. 
because you're not making room for the things that you want and you're not being strategic about the things that you want. So if you say, I want a good man, well, what does that look like to you? Write down the attributes of what a good man is. If the person that you're encountering does not have that attribute, you need to cut him off. Let me close this laptop. You need to cut him off, right? Similarly to those of you who say you want a certain type of job, or I want a job that pays this much, but then the first job that you get, okay, I'm gonna just take that. They only pay $10 an hour, but I'm going to accept that. You're accepting less than what you actually desire, right? Why? Why do you say you want one thing and accept the total opposite? Some of y'all in your relationships, you keep letting your man slip with dumb stuff. Oh, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. They're going to get used to you saying, I don't like this. I don't like that. And they're not going to change a damn thing because you know why? You're not going nowhere. That's how that works. So that's what happens with God or the universe, as y'all like to call it. Let me be culturally sensitive. When God, the creator of the universe, says, okay, well, what do you want? And you say, I want a good man. I want a good job. I want this. I want that. And then things start coming at you that are not that, but you're accepting it. Guess what? If I have this in my hand. My hand is no longer open for what I actually want. So when I actually want these, they come along. I don't have any room for it. I can't hold it. <laughs> it's stuck in my hand. I can't hold it because I have this. You understand? So you're not making room. You're not creating an environment to be able to accept the things that you want. You want a new man, but you're still entertaining your ex. You want a better job, but you're not doing any research to find a better job. You're not making those networking calls after work. You, oh, I'm tired. I don't feel like meeting with people after work. I do want another job. Well, you have to be willing to put in that work. If you have an unskilled job, let's say you work in fast food right now. You work at what I call KFSA. You work at KFC. <laughs> I play too much. You work at KFC, but you want a skilled job. What skill are you looking for? Do you want to go to school for phlebotomy? Are you looking at social work? Do you want to be a business owner? What can you do with the money you're making now to invest it into your dream? Every job that I've gotten came from a connection that I had with someone, the networking that I did, the research that I did to figure out what steps do I have to take to go here, right? When I first decided I wanted to go to school to, for social work, I had to look into the, the programs and figure out what is the time commitment. Some of you, oh, I signed up for school and then you find out what the hours are and it's like, oh, but I got to take my son here. I got to do this. Like you should have looked into that beforehand. That doesn't make any sense. So you're saying you're, you want something, but you're not putting yourself in a position to get it. And then you're not being mindful of what you're actually receiving. You have to start thinking smarter. Y'all have to start taking life a little bit more seriously. I know it seems like, okay, I'm doing this little bit and I'm doing that little bit. And it seems like you're getting by and it seems like you're doing okay. And it seems like things will, you know, slowly and eventually fall into place. It just might work out, right? But what you have to understand is those successful people that you aspire to be like, that money that you aspire to touch, the financial freedom that you want, that stuff came from years of diligence, years of practice. The season where you're reaping is not the season that you sow, right? You can plant seeds in the fall or, you know, right after the winter time. And then 
you reap in the spring and in the summer, right? Everything has its seasons. Y'all got to put that work in. And so the more you straddle the fence and go back and forth with yourself and say, okay, well, I know I need to put in work for this, or I know I need to put in work for that, but I'm going to just do this little bit and then I'm going to stop for a little while. Oh, I was consistent when going to the gym and then you stop for a little while. Baby, you got to lose weight now. You have to be consistent now. That stuff doesn't just fall off. Those opportunities don't just show up. You have to study. And as I keep telling y'all, you have to, well, on my, <laughs> on my Instagram, I always tell my followers, you cannot cheat the game. Everybody has their dues. You got to pay the game what you owe it so you can get something in return. Nothing in life is free. And when my dad used to say that to me all the time, I used to be so confused. Like, what do you mean nothing's free? Well, this person gave me this. This person gave me that. And my dad like, ain't shit free. You're paying for that, whatever it is. You got to pay for it. So you got to pay your dues. If you want a certain type of money, you got to pay your dues. I had my skincare line. I started it in 2016. It is now 2021, right? The first month, for the first time, I hit a major sales goal. That was last year in 2020 when I finally mastered my marketing strategy, when I finally mastered my audience, Right? Took me almost four years because my business anniversary is in November. So it took me almost four years, a little over three, to figure out what needed to be done so that I could target my audience properly. So I could give them the engagement that they needed, right? And generate the type of money I was looking for. But if I would have gave up in the beginning, like, damn, this skincare line, I feel like, I'm spending more money than I'm actually making back and I'm not making sales and people don't really know me and da 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 da. I would have never did it. I didn't have these labels. As a matter of fact, like this right here, this label, and I have no idea. Where did I put my top at? Lord, I took it off earlier making a video. And I'll find it. Anyway, so these labels that I have, this says Queen Care Cosmetics. It says Pumpkin Spice Latte Body Butter Limited Edition. Net weight, six ounces. Mm. There was a point in time where all I had was a jar. And they were all glass jars. I didn't have anything in a plastic jar, but they were all glass jars. And some of them used to break. You know, in business, you lose money sometimes. But USPS has insurance. So you could file it on the insurance and they send a check back in your business name, right? But before I got to this point of the labels, I have my jar, I put the product in and I write right on top of it. <laughs> Cinnamon toothpaste, mint toothpaste, mango papaya body butter. My customers from way back when, they remember that. They remember when my packaging was different. They remember when they used to come to events and people would look at the product like, Right. I had people tell me, you know what, this body butter is great, but I think more people would try it if you changed your packaging. That took time. That took customer feedback. And a lot of y'all, if you're anything like me, I didn't have a lot of entrepreneurs in my family. My mom, a long time ago, random and road, she had a barbershop called a top notch. Same street, they opened a little nightclub called Jazzy's that was like a restaurant slash lounge. Didn't last. I don't think either one of the businesses lasted a year. So I've seen somebody attempt to do something. I've seen them try. And so a lot of y'all look at other people's failures and instead of just learning that you can learn from their mistakes, you take it as, oh, I shouldn't try that because it's not going to work. When in reality, you should try it and you should learn from what they did so you can make it work. Now, I obviously have an online store and not a brick and mortar location, but you get what I'm saying. And a lot of the people that y'all observe, they wouldn't have a problem with dropping knowledge on you. But if they did, guess what? We live in the age of information. You see this right here? Laptop. This thing I'm using right here, 
This is a phone. This is a handheld computer. That's what I call it. Research. Look this stuff up. Stop allowing life to just happen to you. Go get what you want. Get that get up and go back. A lot of y'all don't have enough fire under your ass. That's why I don't, I don't deal with a lot of guys. I, I can't keep certain niggas in my circle because stuff like that is contagious. When somebody doesn't have drive and they don't have no fire in them, that is contagious. When they, the bum behavior is contagious. It's like a spirit. And if that jump on you, I'm telling you, it can take a while to shake back or it can really mess up something in your life that is very difficult to recover from. I need y'all to keep that in mind. I need you to understand that the more momentum that you gain by taking small steps every day, the easier it is to keep going. That's where success comes in. They start making steps, making steps, and they start... It gains momentum, just like a snowball going down a hill and it gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger, right? That's your life. It compounds. When we see people that get famous on social media, do y'all know how long it took me to hit? I'm at 5,000 something followers right now. I got over 4,000 of those followers this week. I've been promoting on my page consistently since 2018. It took me two years to get to 5,000 followers organically. You cannot cheat the fucking game. Stop trying to do it. You got to pay your dues. You got to put it in. You can't grab on nobody's coattail and ride the fucking wave. It's only going to go but so far. That clout chasing, that dick riding, that lying, that pretending you know this person and that person trying to be seen for women. That shit, look. Get serious. Get serious about your life and get serious about what you're going to implement. Get serious about a plan. You need a plan. What are you working towards? Because a lot of y'all out here moving with no fucking plan and it shows. Because every other day your ass is broke. Every other day you want another hustle. And there's nothing wrong with hustling. It's in us. We're black. That's what we do. We, we can make a dollar out of 15 cents. But you still got to have a plan. I'm hustling and I'm working towards what? This is how niggas get fucked up and caught up in the game. When you go into something and then you have no end game. This is why people get caught hustling for years. Like, bro, you were supposed to get in and get out. Them OGs back in the day, they wasn't trying to sell drugs forever. They get their money. They get up a certain amount. They retire their family. Then they retire and they pass the game on to somebody else. Never to be heard from again. Nowadays, y'all so flashy, y'all so concerned with how everybody else is seeing you and you're not making shit happen for your family. You think you're doing something because your baby mama and your son got matching J's and y'all taking fly ass pictures and going to eat crab legs. When you could have been put her in a fucking house and got her out the projects. So you won't have to live there illegally and you can keep your family together. You could have been moved her out. So she's not at risk and your child is not at risk of losing their house by seeing you in there and the fact that you got drugs on you. You could have retired your old ass mama and made sure that she wouldn't have a mortgage anymore if you would have paid that off for her or paid her car off for her. But instead... You wanted to go to the club and pop bottles and rent fucking cars in the city. What are you doing? You didn't rent a car and go have a business meeting with somebody in Miami or South Carolina and talk about an idea you had. You rented a fucking car just for the weekend. You get in hotel rooms and you live in the city. I'm confused. 
right? Get strategic. Get a plan. Get a plan. That's all I got for you. Love y'all.